Joshua 1 8. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but shall but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. True success, according to Joshua, comes from meditating on the Word of God day and night and following it carefully. When one adheres to God's teaching, they will find prosperity and good success. Now Joshua, who, who went through it, you know, he went through the ringer, you know, just absolutely horrid, but he never lost faith in God. And I think what a lot of people's problems, even problems with some of the prophets, the apostles, and the disciples, and, and throughout the Bible, and just people that God used, was there were, there, there were often times where they would give up on what they think God wanted. There's a lot of times where they just didn't feel like this was their calling, and there were a lot of times when they didn't feel like uh, no matter when, when they felt like no matter what they did, God wasn't on their side. And it wasn't that God wasn't on their side. It was God telling them to pull the reins up on the horse and just slow it down to a trot because you're running too fast. Just let me handle it. I'll tell you when to gallop. But right now, you just got to take it easy. So just because God pulls the reins up on you and slows you down doesn't mean that God forgot about you. It just means he may want you to go into a different direction at a, at a faster speed at a later time. So don't give up on what you feel like God wants in your life. Don't give up on any of the dreams or the desires that you have in, the, in, in your life. Because even the book of Joshua says that if we meditate and believe in God's word, that we will prosper. And I know this, that if you guys didn't believe the Bible to be the infallible word of God, you wouldn't be inside this church today on Sunday morning, correct? God is not a liar. So we need to believe in the fact. And, and here, I, I beat this horse to the ground. If you can't believe in yourself, how can you expect anybody else, anybody, to believe in you as well? You have got to get, no matter how bad you think things are, you have got to instill in yourself a great self-esteem in that God put you here for a reason. You're here and inside this church today and listening out there for a reason. You're here because God has a plan, and not just a plan, a glorious, prosperous plan for your life. You just have to absolutely believe it. But when you figure out what that plan is that God has for you, do you think that God is going to let that plan succeed if this is all you're going to do all day? Nope. You got to get up off the butt. You got to go. You got to get up and go. And you have to do it for you first. God puts it in you, then you have to run with it. Because if you don't, there is no success in anybody that doesn't try. You can do anything you want in life. But if you sit down all day, or you're one of those people that stays in bed binge watching Netflix. How in the world do you think you're going to be a success in anything? How do you think that you're going to achieve the goals that God wants you to achieve in your life if you're not willing to get up and go after them and go achieve them? And don't worry about what anybody else says because if God's on your side, the Bible tells us, you've got no fear. It says it 365 times, actually. There is no fear within the love of God. There is prosperity, there's truth, and there's justice. So fight for that prosperity that God promises. Amen? Proverbs 16.3, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. Trust in God to guide your plans. Commit yourselves to God and success will follow. Commit yourself and your plans to God. This verse reminds us that we're not the sole agents of our success, but our faith in God is essential to absolute anything that we do, right? If we have a plan, it's like marriage. Marriage takes three. Husband, wife, God. God's in the middle. Note, husband, wife. Note, husband, wife. Understand that? Not husband, husband, not wife, wife. Husband, wife, God. 
If we put God in the middle of everything that we do, including our marriage, in our family, in this church, in other churches, in our business, and everything that we do, we have a higher probability of success than if we try to do it ourselves. Because you're human. Human error. The Bible teaches us that we all fall short of the glory of God. The Bible teaches us that we're all sinners. Every single one, no exception. There are no exceptions. There was one perfect, and they murdered him. They murdered him. Amen? So don't let that mean nothing. If you want to succeed in marriage, in business, in family, in friendships, in church, in anything that you want, your faith in God is your winning lottery ticket. You don't need to go spend $3 to get it. You already got it. It's right here. It's your heart full of faith. You win. Make no mistake about it. You win. And you don't win sometimes. You win all the time. Because God promises that, and I happen to believe it all. Amen? Jeremiah 29, 11. I love this scripture. It's one of my top 500 favorites. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans of welfare and not for evil to give you a hope and a future. This verse acknowledges God's ownership of our destiny. Now I'm going to repeat that. This verse acknowledges God's ownership of our destiny. Promising that all his plans for us will lead to our welfare and a bright future. With such a perspective, the believer can achieve, achieve success beyond any measure that they have. God says, I know the plans I have for you. And if you were here Thursday night, oh my gosh, you missed it. Man, they put on a great concert. You know, we had free popcorn and Cokes, and we had pizza delivered, and actually we didn't do any of that, but you missed a pretty good time. God's plans, and I said this, I think Sunday maybe, but I know I said it Thursday. There's two ways your life can go. You can either do God's will in your life, or you can be an egotistical maniac, narcissist, and do it your way. You can either do God's will in your life, or you can be the pity potter that doesn't have anything better to do than just sit and pick on other people and complain, and, oh, it's all me, and they did it, and you hear it, and blah. God says, if we do it His way, if we do it the way Scripture says, if we do it the way God says, because remember, God is still up on that throne. He's still sitting mightily. He's still the God of the same stars that was when Jesus Himself walked this earth and prayed to Him in the Garden of Gethsemane. He is still that same shining light. He's still that same God. He's the God of prosperity. He's the God of wealth. He's the God of hope. He's the God that takes all of our medical problems from us. He's the God of all of it. And if God says, <coughs> and He did, I have a plan for you of a hope and a future, then by God, it is true. He declared it. <coughs> and this is one of the first scriptures in the Bible that is direct. Because Jeremiah doesn't say, I think God thinks this. Jeremiah, a prophet, said, God declares. Declares. That is a promise. That is a commitment. That is an oath from an almighty God that he declares that he has a plan for us of prosperity and a good future. All we have to do is believe to achieve. Everybody say that. Believe to achieve. And that equals faith. Faith is it. Believe in God. No matter where things go in your life, no matter how bad that U-turn goes, if you can remain steadfast in this promise, I believe God. I believe in the Bible. I believe His Word is infallible. I believe that He is holy then and that He is holy now. And I believe that He will touch me, heal me, prosper me, and let me achieve every goal that I set my mind on. But I have to do the work. God isn't going to do the work for you. 
You've got to get up and do it yourself. They said Rome wasn't built in a day. That is true. But it took about 30 seconds for Jesus to raise Lazarus. What's harder? Building a city or raising the dead? Think about that. What's harder? Building a city or raising a dead man? Because God achieved the hardest. He achieved the hardest thing. And He did that as an example. He did it so that we knew, as the Bible states, it might be impossible for man, but nothing is impossible for God. Amen? Psalms 37.4 Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Through our delight in the Lord, He grants us the desires of our heart. Success then comes through one's devotion and dedication to God, who knows the best path for us to fulfill whatever it is we want to achieve. Again, this scripture tells us God will. It doesn't say God might. It doesn't say that God can. In this psalm, the psalmist says, He will. That's a promise. That's a commitment again from God that says He will give us our desires of our heart. I'll shave your head. He, they said, go ahead. Well, I don't have my scissors. Okay, he does. Uh, Charlie, I'm starting to worry about you. God will give us all of the desires of our heart. I just read a story. Actually, no, I didn't. It was a phone call that someone tried to have a family Five times they had miscarriages. They went to the cross. They prayed. Their baby's four months old today, a little baby girl. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Their baby is, well, maybe three months. They're four months old. But they went to the cross. Five, the doctors say, you can't. She almost lost her life the third miscarriage. The doctor said, you can't. But here's what I know about doctors. One, I believe that God made some men smarter than others. Uh, I'm not talking about you, Jeff White. Um, <laughs> just, I just wanted to clarify that. God did make some men smarter than others, some women smarter than others. He made them doctors. He made them scientists. And he made other people smarter in other ways. But I can say this about any doctor in the United States. There is only one great true physician, and that is God. You've heard stories about, well, she shouldn't have been born, but she was. They shouldn't be cancer-free, but they are. This heart condition shouldn't be there, or, or should be there, but it's not. If a doctor can't tell you why, we know why. Because we still pray to the great physician. We still pray to that guy on the throne that still runs our lives today, and every once in a while, God will send us a wake-up call and say, hey, remember me? This is what I can do. Now, what are you going to do for me? And I'm going to open up the floodgates to you and your family, and you're going to see what I'm fully capable of. Where's justice? What I am quintessentially capable of. Capable of. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Now, this verse encourages trust and reliance on God in all areas of your life. When we put God first in everything we do, he makes our decisions and our paths straight, leading to, again, great success. But here's the key, again, scripture after scripture after scripture. God commits, God promises, God gives us a covenant, and God says this. I will lead you into a straight path of success. I will lead you. That's the key word. I. God is great. The first, the last, beginning, end, alpha, omega. He's all of it. He's the whole enchilada. He's everything. And if God tells us 
Stay with me. I will make your path straight. You have to believe him. And, but, but we're one of these people. We want to go down that rocky road just to try things. But I got a newsflash for you. That rocky road is going to get you into Nowhereville. And the zip code is 666. Area code is 666. And you can call 1-800-DEVIL anytime that you want when you need advice down that rocky road. Amen? That straight path, it's really good. It's capital G, capital O, capital D, and he accepts calls, collect. Prayer lines open 24 hours a day. Open communication anytime you want to call. He's a kneel and a kneecap away. Anytime you want to call to God, he will answer you. He's never going to refuse that phone call. He's never going to hit decline on his iPhone because he's got the biggest iPhone in the world. He's the one that invented the cloud. Where you at, Riker? I need, I need a t t t Yeah. He is it. Right? Psalms 113. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but he delights in the law of the Lord, and on his law meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by a stream of water that yields its fruit, in its season, and its leaves do not wither, and all it does, it prospers. It prospers. This is a steadfast commitment to his word, and a devout willingness to avoid the wickedness and sinfulness of the world around us. It allows one to become steadfast like the tree planted by the stream, and with his guidance, there is prosperity. <clears throat> In our lives, I will equate that verse to this. Bad character, if you stick around it long enough, will start to corrupt good character. Just like on a tree of fruit, apples or pears. Once a rotten pear or rotten apple starts touching the good fruit, that good fruit then starts to decay and rotten. And soon there's no good fruit on that tree. Choose who you're with wisely. God says... It, you are corruptible. But if we go down through and we plant our foundation by that stream, and I'm not talking to just our family. I'm talking about everyone that's around you. Make sure that the people that you're around. I, I've, I've told Cindy this many times. I won't say anything in church that I won't say to a five-year-old. Don't say anything at your home that you wouldn't say to a five-year-old. Because you're corrupting that five-year-old. Amen? Make sure that what comes out of your mouth is pure and clean to glorify our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? Watch your language. Watch your friends. Keep your enemies closer than your friends. Because they're the ones you got to worry about. Because Satan is the chief of everything. The more and harder and closer that you get to that almighty cross the more Satan will grab a rope and lasso you and he will start pulling and pulling and pulling until he thinks he's got you in his grasp again. It's up to you to fight all temptation. Fight everything that you can because the closer we get to where we want to be in our life, whether it's professionally, spiritually, or in our home, Satan will be there to try to, to, to put a wrench in it so that we can't do that. He is the greatest manipulator of them all. He wants to make sure, right now, he wants to make sure you can't hear me. <clears throat> he wants to make sure that you are again two scriptures ago on that straight path. He wants to make sure again three or four scriptures ago with Jeremiah. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you. I will prosper you. It point blank specifically states that. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean he's going to let you win the lottery. He may prosper you with a great mate. He may prosper you with, a, with a, a vehicle that you needed. He may prosper you with a heart that will go out and reach a multitude of people in his name. Your prosperity isn't always financial. It can be a multitude of things that is going to benefit and glorify God and to get more people into the kingdom of heaven. 
I have pastors all the time that I watch, and they go, well, Jesus is coming. I can't wait. I don't want him to come right now. I don't want Jesus to come today. You know why? Because there's a whole lot of people lost that I think we can reach and save so that when he does come, heaven is full instead of half empty. Amen? Let's go out and do our daggum jobs and get heaven full. That should be our goal. Right? I want him to come someday. I'm not done preaching yet. Uh-huh. Matthew 25, 21. His master, his master said, Yeah. His master. This may be about it, Austin. His master said to him, Well done, good and faith and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. <clears throat> this verse emphasizes the importance of being responsible and faithful in our daily work and tasks, achieving great success in our little, which prepares us to take over much. If you put God here, always, hold Him here in the palm of your hands, God will do things that you don't think imaginable. I remember reading a story about um, the, the landed on the moon, and um, what was the guy's name? It wasn't Armstrong. Landed on the moon, and he came down and he went into a severe depression. And somebody asked him why, and he said, "Well, I didn't set my goals in life high enough." And the interviewer said, "Why? What do you mean?" He goes, "Well, my goal was always." to be the first guy on the moon, and I achieved that a lot sooner than I ever thought I would in my life. So now I'm looking down on my life, and I'm thinking, I've got nothing else to achieve. That was it. I set my goals way too high, or, or too low. So he said, if anybody's ever going to set a goal, set it to one that you don't think is obtainable. But See, I don't think there is such a thing, because I think with God, everything's obtainable. The one good thing about those astronauts, a lot of them, when they got up into space, some of them were actually atheists. But when they landed, they weren't because they got up there and they said, there is no way this wasn't created by a God. There was no way from what we saw up there that there is no God. There is no way that there isn't a heavenly presence up here. So God knows what he's doing. He touches our lives and people in our lives for various different ways. We have to look. I, I've said this for weeks at a time. Find out what make God smile, and then make him smile. You want to know what makes God smile? Jesus said, in red, they asked him about children. He said, it's, it, it'd be easy to, basically, I'm paraphrasing, act like one of these, these children. Be childlike. Be childlike. I have an excuse. But then he also says something to me. The only unforgettable sin, the Bible says, is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. I think there's one that touches it. Like this. Because Jesus said, what you do to one of these little ones, you have also done to me. Let's make sure we protect our children. Too much sex trafficking. Too many drugs. Too many kids lost too young because of drugs and alcohol. And you want to know whose fault that is? It's not, it's not God's fault. It's the lack of obedience from the parents. If a child is going home and all they see is their parents getting high, how is that child going to grow up? If a child goes home and all they see is a mother and a father yelling at each other all the time, how is that child going to grow up? If a child goes home and they see their, their mother or father drunk all the time. How is that child going to be brought up? If they see their parents are racist, how is that child going to be brought up? It's up to us, this generation, to take care of that generation. Because that's what God wants and Jesus wants. He told us so. What you do to one of these little ones, you have also done to me. Let's take care of this generation right now. 
Let's take care of these children. Let's lead by example. Let's get these kids to believe that Jesus Christ is, was, and will forever be. Let's give hope to a hopeless generation that is completely, completely lost. Amen? Psalm 6012, with God we shall do valiantly. It is he who will tread down our foes. All of our victories derive from the Lord and his guidance. On this account, we become invincible in our, order, in our journey towards achieving success. We can, we will achieve anything that we want. And I'm telling you that. A lazy person will never achieve anything but butt sores. True. A person that will get up off their butt and go work. There was a quote that I told you guys a couple of years ago that I believed in then, I believe in now, and it's always been on a sticky note because I'm old. It was always on my office door. And it says, ignorance isn't obvious, but the most obvious people are ignorant. Some of you won't understand what that means. But I'll tell you this. If you have a goal, I cannot, as your pastor or friend to some of you, achieve that goal for you. But you can. I can't make you a success. But you can. I can't make your marriage better. I can talk to you about it, but ultimately it comes down to you. I can't do that. But you can. I can't make you get a job promotion. But you can. I can't make you love your wife or your husband and not get divorced. But you can. With God. Everything that we do in life, if it centers around Christ, we win. There is no losing. There is no failing. The only way that we can fail God is with lack of faith. The only way that we can fail Jesus is with lack of faith, trust, and belief. All we have to, <clears throat> all we have to do is believe. Believe, believe, believe. And that should be easy because we know it's true. We know it is true. Last one. Because it's about, ah. <clears throat> Jeremiah 17, 7, 8. <clears throat> Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted by the water that send out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green. And it is not anxious for the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. This verse celebrates the trust in God. And like a tree planted by water, we must certainly rely on the Lord as our substance, substance through every season, every single season of our life. When we put our hope in Him, great success is inevitable. I know they're big words, but still. It is inevitable. If we put our trust in God, the Bible teaches us we will be blessed in and out of season. We will be blessed in all seasons. The Bible teaches us that everything, not some things, everything is possible for a believer. Now, here's the key. Are you a 23 and a half hour a day Christian? Or are you a 24 hour a day Christian? Because see, that makes a difference. If you waver in your faith a half an hour a day, how can you truly be a believer in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? You can't. You either act like it and live it, 24 hours a day. Or you got work to do, Lucy. You got things that you need to take care of in your life. You've got goals and aspirations, another big word, that you have for yourself in your life. You can only achieve those through dedication and belief in yourself following the cross. Because there is only one way. And that way is by the cross. That is it. By ourselves. We will not succeed in anything. But by that cross, we will succeed at everything abundantly more than we ever could have thought of doing by ourselves. And the church said...
What a bunch of weenies. There's so many people in this church that nobody could hear that on the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> 